appreciate that. And I wanted to introduce and pay tribute to Tom Santander, a big supporter uh, in the Framingham Ashland uh, area. So thank you, Tom, so much for coming. Uh, any other elected officials here? I just wanted to check around. Former state reps uh, are here, here too, and, and school committee members, Beverly. Thank you so much for coming. Really appreciate it. And thank you all for joining us here today. I, I did just come off the walk. I was in uh, Munson yesterday doing a great uh, public service and community service project. It's part of what this whole walk is about, is giving back to the Commonwealth, giving back to communities, uh, and giving back to the people who are in need. There's, there are millions of people from all over our state, literally, who are in need. So uh, a whole crew of us uh, from the campaign and some uh, friends and neighbors from play, uh, from Wayland and other parts of the district came out, and we were doing cleanup uh, in Monson, uh, devastated areas, uh, houses completely picked up and thrown uh, into the woods, and uh, uh, nothing left but uh, pure foundation and uh, lots of displaced people, uh, trees devastated and, and decimated, uh, whole swaths of the town. Uh, you could just very clearly see where the tornado is going. I don't know if the folks are out there, but. Um, there's people uh, in a lot of pain out there, there's people in a lot of pain uh, all over our commonwealth as I have traveled from Wayland and we started on July 2nd in this block and went up to Pittsburgh and went out to Greenfield all through uh, Gardner and Orange and Apple, all these former industrial towns where they had a lot of jobs, North Adams, Adams, Pittsfield. Um, these, are, these are economies, little micro economies, cities that used to have very significant numbers of manufacturing jobs, and they, they, they've almost all completely gone and left. And what's left is sort of the rump of the city, with a lot of people uh, saying to me what their biggest challenge is, is finding good opportunities and good jobs. And whether you talk to the Chambers of Commerce, or whether you talk to the community uh, college presidents out, out there at MCLA, or, or the Mount Wachusa Community College, or, or others, uh, Berkshire Community College, what you hear time and time again is we need jobs. And it, it's sort of funny that, uh, uh, just to put in perspective, you know, I've been asking and seeking um, uh, thoughts and priorities and concerns and what are the challenges people are facing, what are the priorities you have from everybody we've met. It's almost been a thousand people on this walk in just a couple of weeks. Um, and, and the proportions of what I hear is we need jobs and we need to, we need to be able to manage health care costs. And we need jobs and we need more public transportation. And we need jobs, and we need to rebuild our infrastructure. And we need jobs, and we need to protect the environment. And, and that gives you some sense of, of what I'm hearing out there. And the point of all this, which as I take a moment to reflect on it, is that it's not clear to me that the people in Washington, or even quite frankly, um, we in, in the state legislature, are focused enough on this as a priority. It should be top of mind every single day. We've got a debt limit crisis going on down in Washington when instead I think we need to be focused on jobs. They're talking about cutting government spending, and of course, what's that going to do? That's going to cut jobs. It's going to take money out of the economy. Any good economist will tell you, and I got training in, in economics, and I think a lot of people know I've got an MBA in finance, so I've got a background that can really speak to and help me solve and address some of the challenges that we're facing when it comes to interest rates and debt limit and budget deficits and, and, and the global economy. Um, we've, we've got a, a very serious problem uh, whereby people aren't focusing on, on the right stuff down in Washington and, and it's, it's almost like Nero is fiddling and, and we're not uh, tackling the real issues. So um, I want to get our priorities right. And I want to explain a little bit about my background and why I think I'm the best candidate for the United States Senate out there today. So, for example, right after college, I went down to Washington because I cared deeply about public service and public policy. And Ronald Reagan happened to be the president. And he was, you know, building a military budget that made no sense. 600 ship Navy, Star Wars. Um, military uh, expenditures and, and missile programs that uh, were never going to be used and weren't needed. And so I put up an alternative uh, with some people from the Brookings Institution and another think tank that offered a more efficient, more effective, lower cost military. And that work led me to a job uh, eventually in the United States Senate with Gary Hart and then Barbara McCulkey, where I was on her 
their staff doing national security and foreign policy work for. So when we think about some of the challenges that we're facing down in Washington today in terms of the war in Iraq or the war in Afghanistan or whether or not we should intervene in places like Libya or Somalia now where there's a you know, drone attack on some of the folks there. Do, does anybody near, here know how many different countries, what, I just got this news today, how many different countries where we have military operations? Anybody want to guess? Eleven. Hundred and fifty. You, you oh. know, there's about hundred and eighty two <laughs> sovereign nations out there in the world. We're actively in, involved with our military in hundred and fifty of them. Who thinks that's too many? <laughs> I do. I do. We're spending nine hundred billion dollars a year at least on our military budget right now. Is that the right number? Can we take some of that spending and bring it back here to be invested in the United States? In, our, in, a, in rebuilding our infrastructure, in, in rebuilding our schools. What about a program? Everybody's talking about jobs. And I just came from a, a, a gentleman um, where we were talking, he was from the United Steelworkers, and he's talking about the gambling thing in Massachusetts. I said, I got one better. How about if we take some of that $250 billion that's being spent on an annual basis in Iraq and Afghanistan? And we put in place a program where over time, and it could be 10 years, could be 20 years, we rebuild, we take federal dollars and we rebuild every single school in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts that's over 30 years old. How about that as a jobs program that's going to put pipe fitters and carpenters and steel workers all back to work? Forget about a nine-month project on one casino or two casinos. Let's, let's do something big. Let's do something grand. Let's really put people back to work and invest those dollars right here at home. So that, that's some of the learnings that I got when I worked in the United States Senate on national security policy, uh, national security and foreign policy. We can do more with less. What we're not seeing is someone who knows what the military can do and call the Joint Chiefs out on it and say to, you, say to them that, look, you guys can do more with less because families all across America are being forced to do more with less towns and cities all across our commonwealth are being forced to do more with less. You guys need to do more with less too. So we are going to take some of that money and we're going to reinvest it right here. We're going to, we're going to, we should be investing it in clean energy, alternative technologies there, wind, solar, hydro. We are in a global competition with the Chinese and the Germans right now with regard to alternative energy production. And who here thinks that we need to diversify our energy supply and understand that our energy security is as much a national security concern as it is about the price of oil. It absolutely is. The two are intertwined and integrated and fundamentally interconnected. So when we talk about clean energy, we're talking about a net protecting our national security because we will not have an economy that goes up and down and sideways because the price of oil happens to change. Who here remembers 1973 and 1979, what happened in our economy, how it got plunged into recession because of President Obama, because there was conflicts in the Middle East? We can't be living out, and, 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 and who remembers when the price of gas went up to four bucks a, a gallon just a couple years ago, and, and what effect it had on, on our economy right here in Massachusetts and all across the country? Practically plunged us into a separate recession right there. Energy policy is about national security policy. So developing alternative energy sources is as important as anything that we're doing in Iraq or Afghanistan or Libya. The people need in Washington to make that connection. And I want to help make that connection for them when I get down there. Those are the kind of investments, education, public transportation. I was out in Pittsfield. I was out in North Adams. I walked all across Route 2, the North Quabbin uh, area. You know what they need out there? Seniors who can't drive anymore, can't get to the hospital. There's no public transportation. There used to be a beautiful railroad that ran all along that, that northern border uh, along Vermont and, Mass and uh, New Hampshire. And I talked to a, a, a bunch of different seniors at some senior centers. They can't get up there because they can't even get on a, on a bus or a train to go down the road a piece 